What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video, Cup of Code 01. Today we are starting with NumPy. We've hit NumPy up a little bit before, but this is more of a formal introduction to it, and we're actually going to be utilizing it to start to do a lot of different operations. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's jump into our first challenge for the day using NumPy. So challenge, we want to create an array with one on the border and zero on the inside. Now, I did want to put off, I have my thought process here below because I did not just sit here and write this out. I could, but I didn't because that's not how I like to code things. So let's first off run it and see what it is we're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to execute that in the console. This is for uh, none of those. So let me, no, I don't want Joe, get out of here. Let me go back over here. I don't want test. I want NumPy number one. So I'm just going to hit run so we can get all right. I just wanted to load that guy into the system. So now I can execute in console and I will get this out of my face is what I will do. All right, so why are you doing that to me? Get away. All right, so this is essentially what we're gonna be output, outputting here. This is where we have, we have a an array that has ones on the top ones on the bottom and then ones on the side on the right and on the left sides of the array with the center all being zeros so uh off the hand before we get anywhere we kind of know we're going to be doing rows and columns going down i can't do just columns up with a mouse so we're going to be doing rows and columns so with that being said let me get rid of you and you and you and I wanted to be over here, so we were. So we're doing rows and columns. So first off, import NumPy as NP. X variable equals NP.1s. Now it's a function, so I have my open and close parentheses here. See both yellow, because it's a function. And the argument is I'm going to put in the dimensions that I want for this array that's filled with just number one. So that's a five by five. And then I'm saying here, print normal array, putting in a new line and X, again, X I just said is a variable created an array, a five by five array, five rows, five columns, uh, filled with just ones. And then I'm printing out a new line here. So if we were just to run this, bum, 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 bum. So I'm just gonna highlight it and execute selection in the console. Let me turn you into a floating window like always. Here you are, float, float. So all I did so far was we printed an array, a five by five array, five rows, five columns, all filled with ones. So that's np.ones. I could have done np.zeros if we want to do, but again, we want ones and zeros for this. So just create an, an array, a five by five array. So you'll see that an array looks very similar to a list of lists, if you will, because of the brackets. And that will become useful uh, when we get to some uh, math to understand how NumPy is so much more superior to just typical Python uh, syntax when we get to, to mathematical operations. So how, what did I do for my next step? So that's what I have here for my thought process. So I have my thought process, find out how to change the rows. First off, just messing with the rows by indexing the assignment of the values. So the first thing I did was this. I just did X, and all I said, what I say by reassessment of a value. X, and then I'm indexing from the first index to the last index, from the first to the last equals zero. So let's see what now this is gonna do when I do a selection in console. Sorry, let me come up here, execute in console. So nothing, same old array. So let me do this. All right, I figured out what was happening. So when I was running this code, I was saying call X, which was the array, the five by five array that we created, um, go from the very first row, uh, all the rows rather, all the columns, and then equals zero. So I was supposed to change all the rows from the beginning to the end in zero. And it wasn't doing anything because I didn't hashtag these out yet. I actually had the final solution that I was doing and that's why I was screwing up the system. So I'm gonna run this again. So we're gonna run that in the console and we should get, which we do get, again, let me float this bad boy. Uh, do, do, do. We get all of our ones. There's our, our array full of just ones. Now, what I did here was this was supposed to make it all, you know what? I don't, we don't need to see that. So let me do this. 
and let's do this. Now I'm going to execute that in console and it did, it executed it in console. Um, floating mode, this way it will stay on top. So we execute it in console, so here we go. Now I wanna call it, because I didn't call it yet, I executed it, but I didn't call it. So let me just call X. And sure enough, all of my rows from ones turned all into zeros. So all right, I can do some indexing there. Um, what I did next was I wanted to see if I could manipulate a certain selection of just the rows. So what I did here, if you read this code, let me first load it into the execute the selection. And then remember, we got to call it. If we don't call it, that's like printing it essentially is what we're doing because we're in the console right now. So all we did here is from the beginning. It's, now it's not doing it again. What the hell? It's got to be what it is. So what happened here is when I called X, even though I applied this, I'm making like so many amateur mistakes that I, I ran X and I applied this, but I had already changed X. So it was pulling all the zeros. So even when I changed everything from um, row two onward to zeros, it still kept everything a zero because it was already zeros from the call before. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to hash you out. And let me just get rid of this for now since we're not calling it. And I'll have to run this and essentially clean, which I have. There's all my ones. And now I can take you and let me run you real quick. And now I'm getting somewhere. All right. So that's all I have to, I, re, I, without realizing it, I reassigned X and didn't go backwards. So now if you look at our output here, we have the first two rows are all ones. And then the last three rows are all zeros. So what did this do here? Just by, if you don't know what you were doing, you can look at the output and see what it did. Row zero, row one. It kept it ones. Row two, three, and four are all zeros. So this means starting at row two, and again, we go zero, one, two. Starting at row two all the way to the end make them zeros. So it did the right thing there. So we're getting a little bit closer. So now what we're going to do so we don't make the same mistakes is I'm going to go back and we're going to hash you out. And then what do I have here? I put, we want to keep the first row and stop the last row from becoming. So we want this to be ones. I want this to be zeros, but I want this to also be ones. We want the first and last row to be ones. So the way we're going to do that in code function fashion is here. And then we're going to just, we're going to call X when I run it. So what we're doing here is we're saying, go to row number one. Again, we start at index zero. So row one to the end minus one should equal zero. So let's see what happens. So again, I'm going to run this so that we're kind of resetting our assignment of X. I'm going to execute in the console. So we have all ones and now we're changing. This should go zero one. So number one, all the way to the end, zeros, 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 minus one. Oop, keep those as one and stop it here. That's pretty much how that code is uh, read if you were reading it that way. So execute in console. So sure enough, we have Column, I'm sorry, row zero stays the same, isn't touched because we're starting at row one. We want it to equal zero all the way to the end. Zero, zero. It does zero, but then we did minus one, so we come back. Nope. So we stop there. So we have ones on the top, ones on the bottom. So we're getting closer. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to actually hashtag that out. So it's out of our way. Now we want to mess with the columns. Now the way we do that is since we were, if you look, let me move this guy for one second. We want to mess with the columns. And we want to mess with the index of column one first. So you see how I have the comma here. So we're calling X and then we're indexing. When we index, we do row, comma, column. That's exactly how we do it. So if I look at this piece here, what it's saying is bring up X, which we have here as our NP1 array of five by five. Go to row one, all the way to the end, go back up by one, make those zero. Go to column one all the way to the last column and make those zero. So to see that's going to happen, we want to do two things. We want to um, call X when I do it. But first off, we're going to reset what our X assignment is. And it should be all ones, which it is beautiful. And now we're going to come and we're going to run this bad boy. So sure enough, we still have all of our tops are ones and the bottoms are ones from before. Now column number one is all ones, 
or rather column zero, right? Because we're indexing at zero. It should be it should be accurate. So from column number one all the way on, make them zeros. So it did from column one all the way on, make them zeros. So now that we did that successfully, now we can move on. And by moving on, we want to then make the last column also be ones. So that's what we have here. We didn't want to change this last column, and that's what we did one to the end. So look how similar the two pieces are going to look. So this is, what is X? We're going to start it again real quick. X is simply this five by five array of ones. And now I'm saying with X, I want to do some reassignment to the indexing of the rows and the columns. The row is first segmented here, and then the column is segmented here. Think of it as like X and Y. What do I want it to equal zero? I want to change the values from ones to zero, where row one all the way to the end and then back it up by one and then column one all the way to the end, back it up by one and then print X. So now that we did reassign X, we can run it here. So now we have our top and our bottom and our sides all ones with the inside dimensions being zero. Uh, many different ways you could have done this. Another reason why I just love Python encoding. Uh, there's no such thing as a one way to do anything. So let's quickly run through the rest of our examples for today. So I have here append, I'm actually gonna do, since I got this on a video and I don't need that, we're gonna get things out of our way. So we want to append the values to the end of an array. Let me get rid of you. So X is a variable equals, we have, we're making a list here. This is not an array yet, this is just a list. And then we're taking X and we're saying, NP uh, append it, oh, which actually reminds me, I'm gonna have to import numpy as NP because I got rid of my previous code. So X is equaling, this is simply a list, and then we're saying NP.append X, X is a list with a list of lists. And then we wanna print out X. So let's see what we get when we run this in the console. So, we now have, let me bring it down so you can kind of see, that should be sufficient, right? So we have 10, 15, 22, 44. So there's our first list, there's our X, and append to it 30, 40, 50. So we have 30, 40, 50, and append 60, 70, and two. 60, so we appended the list, nothing there. It's almost like list uh, concatenation, nothing nothing special. Um, and then if we wanted to sort those functions, that's all we, I'm sorry, not the function, we want to sort those numbers, that's all we did here. It's the same exact values that are within this vector, essentially this 1D array that we have here, they're all uh, now sorted. If we want to create an empty and a full array, all we did is we created variable empty equals np.empty, and that empty array, all we're doing here now, we're not giving it the values, we're creating dimensions. So I'll show you, we already have, uh, well, damn it, we already have NumPy entered, so let's just first run this so you can see what we have. So we create an empty array with dimensions of three rows by two columns. So this is a three by two array. Array is, is, is a matrix, rather, is just a rectangular array, which you'll see more of when we get to the crash course part. So this is a three by two, three rows, two columns, um, printing empty, nothing special about it. It's a, it's a you can see the values here. You can see how those are negative exponents, negative 307, 307 uh, power. This is 1.37 to the negative 306. So in all reality, these are all zeros. Look at this, 0, 0.0 to the exponent of zero. These are all zeros. That's what empty array means. Um, essentially, it's just a three by two with all zeros is what it has. Um, now over here, I have a different variable, empty about one, mp dot empty, two by two instead of a three by two. And I'm putting in a D type equals int. So this is making my daddy type only be an integer. I don't want anything other than an integer. So that's what we did here. I have an empty one is the name of the variable, np dot empty two by two. So we have two rows, two columns. So that's accurate. And I only have integers. I do not have um, any exponents or floats. And then lastly here, what did I put in the comments? Uh, rows kind of fill your argument. Yep. So this is full. I want to make a full um, array. NP dot full, how creative is that for them, right? So we have our open and close parentheses here for the function, and then we're putting in row two, two columns, and seven is what we want it filled with. So print full, and I'm gonna execute that selection of the console, and I have a two by two matrix, which again is a rectangular array. 
I have a two by two matrix that is filled with the number seven. That could have been any argument that you wanted to there you wanted to fill it with. Now, these small nuances are not entirely super important, but later on when we get to, again, machine learning and AI, you're going to be messing with matrix multiplication and vector analysis a lot and knowing how to, sometimes when we're running particular things, we want to run it on an empty array or a full array. We want to dictate what the array is. Sometimes we want you know, an, a zero array, but we want ones going in a diagonal. And these are all different NP functions that can utilize that, which you're going to see um, a little bit later why that's so important. And so let me do this. Goodbye, my dear friend. Now, what do I have here? I have, and it's probably giving me that because I, of course, got rid of, what are we calling here? Now my code's happy because I put it back in when I was calling. So we're calling, of course, NumPy as MP from time it import default timer as timer. I have a size here of what is this? One, two, three, one, two, three hundred thousand, one hundred million. So start timer starting is an empty timer function. So start is just a variable the time to timer function. X equals MP dot full size of seven. And then we want to end the timer. And then I want to say pretty much printing out how long did that take? So we're going to execute the selection. And we have timer is not defined. Start equals timer of the function. And sure enough, I did not include this when I just ran that. So good thing there. So it says timer is not defined. Of course it's not defined because I didn't run this from time at import default timer. So now when I do it, it better do it or I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So there we go. Perfect. So it took, that's how many seconds it took to run that code. All I'm going to do, I'll let you guys read through these on your own. I'm just going to run them because this is going to become important later. So we have 0 0.15, 0 0.02, 0 0.00. So the only difference between these is that one is a full array, one is an empty array, and one is a zeros array. So by looking at this, you would say, and properly so, that for NumPy to create a full array takes the longest amount of time. To create an empty array, the second longest, and to create a zeros array was the fastest. Now, this is going to become very important again when we want to create artificial arrays to uh, take space in some of our algorithms that we're going to be using in different models. So that is going to be it for today, guys. I hope everyone's having an excellent day. Enjoy the rest of your evening if it's nighttime, and I will see you all on the next video.